In Jesus' name we pray. Our Lord, we are praying that you will encourage us to remain steadfast in times like this as we serve you in Jesus' name. Please give us your word. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I'm talking today on steadfastness in service. Let me introduce an adjective to my topic sentence. Let me call it this way. Steadfastness in Christian service. All right? God expects Christians to serve. As a matter of fact, we were saved so that we can serve. Who are we serving? Number one, we are serving God. Who are we serving? Number two, we are serving the body of Christ. And who are we serving? Number three, we are serving humanity. You do not exist in isolation. Neither do you exist to occupy space. You exist to fulfill purpose. So I want to charge us, especially those of you who are born again, who know God, that God wants you to be steadfast in your service to him. This exaltation is very important because we live in days where men are losing their commitment to the things of God. Christian service is almost evaporating in the mind and life of many people. What we have today is service for immediate reward. Nobody wants to serve God and believe that God will bless him. We want to engage God on commercial basis. You want to sing? You expect after singing, pastor must give you money. You want to even go to pray? You expect that after prayer, you must be praying for paid per hour for praying. You want to get engaged in one service or the other in the house of God, media, ushering, cleaning the house of God, doing one thing or the other, and you base your service not on heavenly reward, but on circumstantial service. The Lord is saying, be steadfast. Now, I come to a category of people who want to serve God, but there are challenges of life. You said, I'm of age, no husband. God has not answered me, so I won't do children evangelism again. I have been preaching, serving God with all my heart. Many children are getting born again through me. I'm married for five years, no child, so I will not serve God again. The charge is coming to you, sister. Be steadfast. Look at what Paul the Apostle have to tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Christian service is labor, sir. Places three demands on you. Number one, it demands your time. Number two, it demands your tre treasure. And number three, it demands your talent. Jesus Christ gives us a prophetic parable. I share that with you. He lined up three men those three men, they are figurative expression. He gave one five. He gave the other one three. And he gave another one one. And he said, go and trade with it. Go and reproduce it. Go and multiply it. Go and serve with it. That is how God has given us resources. Do you remember what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 4, verse 11? He gave to some apostles to some prophet, to some uh, uh, evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Those five-fold ministry, he embedded it in one man. That man there is the symbol of the church for the edification of the body that we all come into the knowledge of truth. That is the purpose. That one man there is the figure of the church. And if you are part of the church, you either have one, to, or even all of those gifts embedded in you. Do you know the purpose? It's not for bragado. The purpose is not for you to bear a title and change your, renew your title everywhere, or upgrade it. You know. The purpose is for service. Then he called another man, he gave him three. God the Father, God the Son, 
God, the Holy Spirit. That speaks about the Trinitarian God. It's symbolic. That as he gives the church five, he left captivity captive, he gave gift to all men. He now said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. What will prevent, prevent hell from prevailing against the church? The Trinitarian God. So the man that have five talents must link up with the man that have three talents to fulfill his ministry. He lined them up in an array like that. Then he gave to one, one. That is the symbol of isolation, individuality. One cannot stand alone. God expects that that single one given to him, he will depend on the resources flowing in that line to survive. But he went like the prodigal son. It is the symbol of prodigal Christians who will not want to be coordinated, be co-opted into the service of God's kingdom. And you see many people today that are gifts they have, one, they want to run in isolation. If this man with one gift are partnered with the one with three and with the one with five, they will have rubbed together. In the long run, their blessing will have been spread evilly. So I want to challenge you then. Are you discouraged because of challenges? You say, I've been to prayer meetings. My prayers are not yet answered. Go again. It may just be tomorrow and you are absent from tomorrow. Go again. God will answer you. Don't give up. You have been sowing seed for God's service. God has made you kingdom treasurer. And now you have challenge with your business. Because of that, you say, if it is like this, if God can see all that I am doing and he did not bless me, I won't do it again. Please go ahead and do it. Or... Finally, you are discouraged because of men. Those you are serving with, they criticize you, they give you name. And as a result, you are discouraged. You are not serving God. That is what Paul said here. Always abounding in the work, in the service of the Lord. Always. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, there is a reward awarding you. When we get home there, there is a reward. You are going to be given a mansion. There are gold for overcomers. There are gold for soul winners. There are goals for righteous living. There are gold and crown for those who are consistently giving to God's service. Different kinds of gold, gold and, and crown. I pray you will not miss your own in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this encouragement. We are praying and asking that, that oh God will help us. You will strengthen us and give us grace to consistently serve you in times like this, whether it is convenient or not convenient, in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.